Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In this video we're going to discuss exercising while fasted and why it's actually a good thing. In our Physiology of Fasting video we discussed some of the science behind intermittent fasting. In this video we'll delve even deeper into the hormonal changes that occur while fasting. So first off is, of course, insulin. As we've hopefully demonstrated several times, fasting is the most effective method for reducing insulin levels. And this benefit is seen in shorter duration fasts, say 24 to 36 hours, and is even more effective in longer fasts. And of course, intermittent fasting regularly helps to reduce insulin sensitivity. Reducing insulin causes diuresis, which allows for the release of excess stored water and salt. This is good as it reduces bloating and gives a sense of feeling lighter. Next is adrenaline. Adrenaline levels actually increase during fasting, which makes sense considering our ancestors once again. Added energy during times of sparse or no food would have of course been an advantage for hunting more food. In fact, a 48-hour fast increases the metabolic rate by 3.6%, an obvious death knell to the supposed metabolic shutdown that so many anti-fasting proponents will quote. And over a four-day fast, this metabolic rate increased to 14%. Next up, electrolytes. As we've seen in the misconceptions video, there is no cause for concern over having enough nutrients. Macronutrients are readily available in the stored fat. Most concern is over micronutrients. However, long-term studies have shown that this is not a problem. Potassium levels may drop slightly, but even in fast as long as two months, these did not drop to unhealthy levels. Magnesium, calcium, and phosphorus levels remain stable. This is due to the fact that 99% of these minerals are stored in the bones, and therefore the body is never lacking for them. Of course, a vitamin supplement can always be used to ensure proper levels of micronutrients. And finally, growth hormone. This one is obviously very important in regards to exercise and weight training. Growth hormone is known to increase the use of fats for fuel as well as their availability for such use. It also helps to preserve muscle mass and bone density. As we age, the release of HGH is reduced, but unfortunately taking injections of HGH has well-known negative side effects, such as prostate cancer, high blood pressure, and enlarged heart. So the most effective method for stimulating more growth hormone to be released is, of course, fasting. Over a five-day fast, the secretion of HGH increases 1,250%. The effect of this over the length of the fast is to maintain muscle and bone mass, which is obviously of great benefit during exercise. And for a shorter two-day fast, HGH secre secretion still increases 300%. It's very possible that this elevated HGH secretion from fasting will increase muscle mass as demonstrated in several studies. And the side effects of fasting released HGH? There are none. Obviously, this would have huge implications for exercise and training while fasted. The released HGH will aid in increasing muscle mass, and recovery from hard workouts would be improved due to the increased adrenaline. This has the twofold effect of allowing for higher intensity workouts with faster recovery. Studies have also shown that during eating periods, the release of HGH is suppressed. As we've already discussed, fasting transitions the body from burning glucose to burning fat. There are actually five stages to fasting, and by the time we have reached stage five through intermittent fasting, only the brain and red blood cells actually need glucose for fuel. At this point, the body is breaking down triglycerides into glycerol and free fatty acids. Almost all tissues in the body can use free fatty acids for fuel. The glycerol from the breakdown of the triglycerides is used by the liver to create glucose through gluconeogenesis, which we discussed previously. 
So the point is that while in a fasted state, the breakdown of fat is enough to provide glucose for the brain and red blood cells. And therefore, there is no muscle wasting needed to provide this fuel. And this is good because the body can store virtually unlimited amounts of energy as fat, but a very limited amount as glucose. As a reference point, an individual with 7% body fat, which is pretty close to as lean as you can be, that person has a minimum of 20,000 calories stored as fat. He or she would need to run 10 marathons in a row to use all that energy. So in a fasted state, the brain is being fueled mostly by ketones with a small amount of glucose, and the body is fueled by its unlimited supply of fatty acids. In a recent study over a four-day fast, there was a continuous increase in norepinephrine, which is used to mobilize the body and brain for action. Also, because of the increased adrenaline that we discussed before, there is no decrease in resting energy expenditure, or REE. REE is also known as metabolism. And in reality, REE increases by more than 10% during the fasting period. Additionally, VO2 increases. This is the measure of the volume of oxygen that an athlete can use. So instead of the metabolism shutting down while fasting, as we are led to believe by trainers, doctors, and dietitians, instead our metabolism increases and gives us greater ability for physical exertion. Endurance athletes use the phrase hitting the wall, also known as bonking, which is a state at which the muscles have become depleted of glycogen. The most famous example of this is from the 1982 Ironman triathlon, when American competitor Julie Moss had to crawl to the finish line. So how would one circumvent bonking? Well, the obvious answer, the one you get from trainers, is to eat more glucose as carbs to replenish the glycogen. But this is a slower and shorter term fix than fasted training. Let's uh, use a quick analogy here, shall we? Imagine a truck driver who is hauling gasoline in his tanker. On the highway, he runs out of gas. He's completely stranded until someone can bring him more gas. That sounds ridiculous, right? I mean, he has all that gasoline in the tanker, but can't use it. He simply doesn't have the tools to use the virtually unlimited supply of fuel that he's carrying. The same is true of the fat we store in our bodies. All we need is to give our bodies the tools to use it. And that comes from training while fasted. Many professional athletes have started doing this in addition to eating an LCHF diet. But <laughs> of course, that's a different video. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Ronda Rousey are just a few names. There are many studies that support training while fasted. And as we can see from this picture, in which the muscle fibers are compared before and after training while fasted. There are many more muscle bundles, as well as a deeper shade of red, indicating more available fat for fuel in the post-fasting training. Something to note is that it will take one to two weeks of training while fasted to train your muscles to burn fat. During this time, the workouts will be more difficult. But as we've seen, they will rapidly become easier with a quicker recovery. So to sum up, in a fasted state, you can train harder due to increased adrenaline and VO2. You can build muscle faster and recover faster due to increased HGH. You can burn fat, increasing fatty acid release for fuel. And all of these benefits are free to everyone everywhere. And you don't need to buy expensive supplements, so it will save you money as well. And with that, we'll close this video. We'll be back soon with the next video in this series about fasting and women. I hope you'll check it out. As always, I encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe. When you subscribe, you'll be alerted to new videos when they post. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and visit our website, bealoser.today. All of the videos are now on the website as well. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep being a loser.